Hi, uh, and welcome to this short video discussing a recent paper that I, Rhys Andrews, and my co-author, Malcolm Bynum, published in Regulation and Governance. The paper is entitled The Revolving Door in UK Government Departments, a Configurational Analysis. And basically, in that paper, we seek to analyse the different characteristics of government departments in the United Kingdom that might be associated with a high level or an absence of a high level of revolving door activity. That is the movement of top civil servants from government into corporate jobs. Corporate jobs that potentially constitute a conflict of interest whilst they're in post. Okay, so the revolving door has become a really important issue within contemporary public governance. And that's not just within the sort of scholarly literature, we see uh, in reported in the media regularly cases of what appear to be sort of problematic movements from government and also from business into government. But we're, what we're particularly interested here in is in movements from government jobs into high paying corporate uh, private sector appointments. Now, on the face of it, a lot of the kind of media attention to these types of appointments suggest that there's some kind of problem with them and therefore they need to be either regulated differently or in some sense uh, prescribed altogether but these kind of serve a very important purpose for both government and for industry itself it helps the different parts the different sectors of the economy to understand each other's needs much more effectively so for example People that move from government into business bring much needed knowledge about how government works, what government wants into the private sector. Those that come from the private sector into government are able to bring new commercial insights to government. They're also able to bring kind of expertise in particular areas that perhaps isn't as readily available to central government especially. So all of those reasons explain why the revolving door is something that is very prevalent within contemporary political and public life. However, inevitably, because there is this sort of negative media attention, there are questions that are always raised about whether sort of foreknowledge, especially of these types of movements between government and business, might lead to conflicts of interest in the way in which civil servants in particular carry out their duties. So it can enable civil servants to operate in a way that is contrary to the public interest if they know for example that company that they're regulating in one way or another is likely to offer them a high paying job at the same time once they've moved through that revolving door because they have those connections to the people that they were working with in government that can promote a more sort of uh, exclusive and intensive form of lobbying that is also problematic for the wider public interest. So in our, in our paper, we draw on managerial exit theories, which are theories about why managers might leave organisations to explore the different configurations of departmental characteristics that we think could be potentially uh, associated with the presence or the absence of high revolving door activity amongst senior civil servants in UK central government departments. And we're looking at that for the period 2015 to 2018. And we use fuzzy set qualitative comparative analysis to do it because that's a really great technique for looking at different configurations of types of conditions that might be associated with a particular outcome, in this case, revolving door activity. So our basic theoretical kind of argument revolves around the idea that individuals who work with senior civil servants who work in a particular part of government are, are able to develop a distinctive mix of human and social capital, which constitutes something termed in the literature bureaucratic capital. And we feel that that bureaucratic capital could be uh, for particular to particular departments within government. And for that reason, uh, it could be especially uh, attractive to corporate employers and therefore something that can be parlayed by civil servants into uh, more lucrative employment opportunities after being in government. So our basic arguments roughly could be summarised as suggesting that 
senior civil servants working in larger government departments, those that are working in better remunerated departments or more commercialised departments, and those where there's already high turnover amongst civil servants are more likely to be either targets for uh, revolving door appointments or they're likely to seek to exploit opportunities that might be out there in the corporate sector. So because we adopt uh, FSQCA approach, we're able to look at the different ways in which those types of characteristics of departments might combine. So what we term a configuration analysis has been applied to understanding whether big and commercial or big commercial and well paid or not large and not well paid departments, for example, are associated with higher or lower levels of revolving door activity. So in doing that, we're looking at the 17 major ministerial spending departments that were present within the UK government for the period 2015 to 2018. So departments such as, for example, the Ministry of Justice, the Treasury, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office and so on. And we're very fortunate in the UK to have a great data set in which to examine uh, revolving door activity, which is based in the Advisory Committee on Business Appointments Department. Uh, and it enables you to understand because civil servants have to apply for approval to this committee uh, for any outside appointments they might take after serving in government that imply a conflict of interest because it relates to an employer that they had a regulatory relationship with. And we're able to use the data that's published on their website to analyse levels of revolving door activity and then you know, a range of different associations that we're particularly interested in between organisational characteristics, configurations of organisational characteristics and that revolving door activity. So we count the number of ACABA applications per department and we treat that as our measure of revolving door activity per year. Uh, and in terms of the organisational characteristics we're interested in, I've mentioned large departments and so on, we have five conditions as they're termed in FSQCA. So we have a measure of size, which we take to be the headcount of a department, pay, which is the median pay amongst senior civil servants, commercialisation, which we regard as the level of capital procurement expenditure in each department, levels of turnover, that is how many people are leaving relative to how many people are coming into the organisation, and the level of agentification, which we treat as another measure of commercialisation. That is the number or the percentage rather of staff who are employed in agencies rather within the core ministry. Uh, and a more agentified department, we, we argue, would be one that is more subject to kind of business style practices and more at arm's length from the minister and the ministry. And in some senses may therefore have uh, more opportunities to connect with the private sector, but at the same time, may be seen to have a lower level of social capital or bureaucratic capital within government because of that arm's length relationship with the kind of centre of government. So all of these arguments we develop uh, are relating to these different conditions and the outcome of high revolving door activity in the paper. Uh, and obviously you can read more about them there. We also work through the process of doing an FSQCA analysis in some detail, we report all the statistics relating to um, the different characteristics. We then report uh, the truth table, and we've got all sorts of other really important statistics that explain how we've applied FSQCA, which as we as already mentioned, is a really good technique for looking at small end uh, data sets. And we extend what is the, the, the usual approach to using FSQCA by applying a panel-based version of, of the uh, technique, which means that we're able also to look at the extent to which configurations stay consistent through time and whether the solutions in terms of the relationship between a configuration and outcome stay consistent as well. So I'm not going to talk about all of those really uh, important uh, further sort of robustness checks that we undertook, but you can read about those in the paper. And what I'm going to talk about quickly now is the main analytical representation of the analysis, which is the sufficiency analysis, in which we identify the pathways of configurations of organisational attributes that are associated with high and also with not high revolving door activity. 
Um, the focus is especially obviously on the higher evolving door department. So we have two solutions here, which you can see on, on the left of the screen. And if we look at a sufficiency analysis, what we want to focus on in particular is the large circles within those solutions, which suggests that that particular attribute is a core condition. The smaller ones are those that are peripheral conditions. So we're interested in those to a certain extent, but we're especially interested in the core uh, conditions. So from that, we can see that we have two different configurations, two solutions that are relating to high revolving door activity. The first comprises a large department, the presence of high executive pay, the presence of high capital procurement, but low uh, or non-presence of high gentrification. And the second comprises high pay, presence of high pay, but the absence of large size, the absence of capital procurement and the absence of gentrification. Now, for the first of those, we have one department that is consistently associated with that solution throughout the study period, and that's the Ministry of Defence. And there's a recent report by Transparency International, which suggests the Ministry of Defence is well known for having a high level of revolving door activity. And so this corroborates that further with this kind of longitudinal uh, configurational analysis that identifies the characteristics, if you like, of the Ministry of Defence that are key uh, to its association with revolving door activity. In the second of our solutions, we find that the Cabinet Office and the Foreign and Commonwealth Office are associated with that second sort of configurational solution. Here we have well-paid departments that are not very big, that don't necessarily have a big capital procurement outlay and are not very gentrified. Um, we suggest in our analysis, we work through various things relating to what is distinctive about these, these particular departments. And it's not just these sort of core organisational characteristics that are at work. And we, we argue in the paper that they are also the departments that we would associate as being part of the kind of core executive in UK government. So that is, they are for sure large specialist a uh, high turnover department in the case of the Ministry of Defence, uh, a small politically connected, not so commercial department in the case of the Cabinet Office and the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, but they are very much close to the Prime Minister, well known to be close to the kind of levers of power within the British state. And so they also uh, thinking through the other ways in which we can understand the sort of distinctiveness of these types of department, they are also what Theodore Lowy would describe as concerned with the constituent policy areas of government. So those are the kind of the basic functions of the state that all states are required to address. So whether that be defence of the realm in the case of the MOD, relations with other states in the case of the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, or administering the kind of policy agenda of the government of the day in the case of the cabinet office. Fundamental constituent policy areas, part of the core executive in the United Kingdom. So most of the other departments that we identify that are associated with not high levels of revolving door activity, we suggest sit outside of this core executive. And also it seems they are associated with more distributive types of public policy. So things like, for example, the Department of Education, Department of uh, Communities and Local Government, as was Ministry of Housing for Local Government, as briefly was, and is now, of course, the Department of Full Leveling Up. So our argument, though, basically then in the paper is that once we've identified these types of departments as being particularly susceptible to high levels of revolving door activities, that perhaps the kind of regulatory apparatus needs to be tailored more closely to the things that they're doing. And for that reason, we suggest that it doesn't necessarily mean that revolving door activity throughout government needs to be monitored more closely, but certainly for civil servants operating in the core executive of UK government, perhaps more stringent uh, kind of rules relating to uh, revolving door activity would be beneficial.